that so we're going to talk about uh, and guidelines for Android uh, with Paris in March.
who knows that he's using a version of Android 4.0 or higher. Uh, okay. okay. uh, so we see that uh, the, these initial versions of the system were um, actually, uh, well, not so design centric, right? There are some uh, gray uh, gradients, so something uh, similar to what we've seen even in Windows. Uh, it was, of course, new and uh, back at the time uh, looked nice. However, uh, well, Android has evolved uh, quite much. Now we, see, now we can see something like this. So it looks uh, uh, now it looks a bit different, and um, well, the uh, graphical design is not the only thing that changed, uh, because the Android design team uh, started to look out for uh, some other usability uh, techniques that uh, would probably make it. Uh, experience better. Uh, and I can show you an example. Oh, by the way, uh, this whole transition uh, uh, was done uh, in a time span of like two years. So uh, it uh, seems like quite a short time for a system so, uh, so complex to evolve that way. Uh, but in the world of... Yes, excuse me. Uh, what is API? Uh, so, uh, that's basically the uh, developer uh, version of uh, the developer notation of the system version. Uh, and it's good that you uh, ask that because uh, you are going to uh, meet these uh, annotations uh, really often. Uh, so, or, uh, some developers will tell you, oh, we, can, we cannot do this because we're targeting a version uh, like API 8. Uh, which is uh, Android 2.2, uh, and some things just don't, don't work below, like we've seen uh, at the first presentation when we can show uh, the hybrid app, which was which couldn't be just built uh, below uh, Android 2.2, and uh, that's just API 8. Uh, currently, uh, most recent uh, API is building uh, 4.2, and it's API 17. Okay, back to the example. Uh, so we have a standard system dialog window, uh, and uh, if you're used to uh, systems like Windows, uh, you could uh, always see uh, the patterns of standard uh, dialogs in the reverse order. Uh, what we see here, right? It's okay, button, a positive button, uh, the button that uh, makes the the actual change not reverts it. Uh, here it is on the right side. Normally it would be on the left side. So any idea why uh, why the change? If the users are the ones to uh, probably that may be uh, one reason uh, that most of the users statistically are right-handed and it's uh, maybe easier for them to, to push this button. Uh, however, there was another explanation. Uh, well, the Android team, they probably performed some research and they uh, draw, drew a conclusion that uh, when the user finishes reading this line, his uh, eyes are concentrated uh, around this point, so it's easier to spot this button. So uh, I would see some uh, human-computer interaction uh, things that uh, affect This slide uh, is that, uh, as we see, Android still evolves, uh, and it's not that uh, one, we once develop the app, or designed the app, it's developed, it's released, and it's over. Uh, the system lives, and so uh, our app has to. Um, so we better keep up to, to the changes, uh, observe what's uh, going on in the API. They release uh, often. Uh, new uh, new guidelines, new uh, things in their package that are uh, simply available to, to all the developers. 
and uh, well, you can update the application whenever you want, you don't want uh, when it's released uh, to the Google Play Store. Uh, you can just push, push an update and it's going to be uh, sent to all the users out there. Okay, so uh, in this fast changing world, uh, how can we design uh, the sole process of, uh, of the design uh, so that we can uh, accomplish this task? Uh, well, as we have seen before, uh, the most important thing uh, that was uh, mentioned in yesterday's talk of wireframing uh, was called uh, testing. Uh, I prefer the term evaluate or evaluation. Um, and maybe it's also the show a similar slide, or then, uh, similar to, to the next one I'm going to show you. And um, actually, the more if I were to specify uh, one most important uh, sentence for this whole presentation, it would be the one here written uh, in the small. You see it So, uh, when you, once, once you have your design, just uh, go out to the public and evaluate it. Uh, so, a uh, really, really wonderful example of uh, how you can accomplish that. Uh, he managed to move you uh, out of the desk. Uh, this, and now I want you to, during the workshops, I want you to move a step further and go, I don't know, into the building uh, or um, outside to the people, some random people that will uh, point you, uh, you know, that can tell you the, uh, the right uh, option of uh, your designs, and you have uh, several of them. Uh, and then you gather the feedback and you, uh, you can see some trade ideas emerge from that. Here is a, a more complicated version. Uh, this one's actually really similar to, to what I said uh, just about that. Um, although I have here uh, two phases of two points where the evaluation happens. One is uh, after the prototyping and another after developing uh, as uh, yesterday at the wireframe uh, presentation was being set. Uh, but the evaluation um, on a form when the app is actually uh, usable, you know, but not yet released, uh, it can tell you uh, some even more things. Uh, but before that, uh, this step of prototyping. Uh, and, well, okay, you're now prototyping the wireframe uh, specialist, uh, so I'd like just to uh, add something to, to the tools. Yesterday, you've seen uh, actual every uh, connection. And what I'd like to add here is uh, that they have a really great uh, good student program uh, and it allows you to uh, get a free commercial copy, a commercial license uh, of the tool. Uh, you just have to write them an email uh, with some grades from the university and some short description of uh, why would you like to, to get the software. So that's a really good opportunity to save a few hundred apps, for example. Uh, having said that, uh, the software we actually used uh, while designing Split it. Uh, it's called Pencil. Uh, it's uh, free but uh, not officially uh, developed anymore. Uh, but uh, well, I chose, to, uh, chose it because uh, I didn't want to go into the learning curve of, uh, of lecture. Just open the window and felt kind of intimidated by uh, all these actions, right? And, and, uh, these powerful options that I didn't need at the time. Um, so I just went for pencil. Uh, and there's even a cool uh, thing that you can uh, actually export the, uh, your wireframes to. Uh, see them on a device, so you don't have to build an actual device. Uh, well, actually, also offers such uh, such an option, but uh, yes, you can do that too if you just uh, choose to use choose to use uh, that. And it's described uh, in the URL. I don't know if, it's, if you can read it, it's tinyurl.com/pencil-wf. Okay, so, 
once you have a prototype, uh, either digital or even better on paper, because you can take the paper uh, wherever you want, uh, then you go for the feedback, evaluate it, uh, you see what's, what's good about the design, what's bad, uh, you can you know, just, uh, either uh, make some corrections or uh, throw it away, away and uh, start anew. And in the meantime, in fact, uh, the developers can uh, start uh, their work. Uh, you just send them uh, some initial versions of, uh, of the designs that you actually think uh, are going to make it. Uh, and then after the app is uh, developed, uh, you do this uh, final evaluation, uh, and then uh, some uh, unexpected things can happen. Uh, when Design exploded. Um, we had a, a situation like this because uh, there's a screen. That, uh, well, the, the most important part of the app actually is uh, the screen that uh, the screen where you enter the payment uh, data, like uh, who paid, for what. Uh, that's really the clue to, to usability out there. And we designed a beautiful uh, one screen so, uh, one screen solution where everything was visible. Uh, and we thought it, it was great, uh, but when actually uh, gave the app to the first uh, test user, uh, it turned out that uh, this person couldn't actually uh, input anything because the keyboard uh, hide uh, has hidden uh, half of the screen, and it was uh, troublesome to um, to hide it back. So we had to. Completely changed the way uh, we thought of uh, this uh, whole screen, and we went uh, back then for the uh, swiping solution. Uh, okay, a bit more on how to where to get the idea. Are you interested in uh, such information? Okay. Uh, well, the most basic uh, thing I can, that I can say uh, about uh, getting an idea for the application is uh, observation. Uh, you can, uh, uh, depending on the uh, target uh, for the people where uh, you think there might, might be uh, an app worth creating, uh, you just have to somehow put yourself in the shoes of, of the end user. Uh, so that's a bit like user-centric design. Uh, the precise thing that uh, I was talking about. Uh, yeah, giving true value for the user. Uh, well, that's that's a bit uh, general, uh, quite a general statement. Uh, but it's about uh, more of simplifying their lives or augmenting uh, the lives that they already have and uh, introducing some new concepts, new ideas. Uh, like I don't know you have to use this app to uh, I don't know, get in touch with your colleagues from, from some but we already have Facebook or, or other tools, so why would I need now? And the way of uh, thinking of mobile apps that I, I uh, particularly like uh, is thinking of them as magic wands. Any fans of Harry Potter here? Uh, okay, so uh, maybe you remember uh, in one of the parts there was something called item called the Marvelous Map, uh, which showed uh, the positions of all the people in, in, in the, the Hogwarts or in some other places uh, in real time. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, we have an app called Glimpse, which uh, allows you to send your position uh, to, um, to your friends so that uh, you can meet somewhere at the time, even when both of you are moving. Exactly where the other person is. So it's kind of similar, uh, and if, uh, if you think about it that way, you can uh, come up with some uh, really unexpected results. I'm really wondering if there's an app in Google Play called Lumos, which would be a player. So. Okay, let's get to the usability. Uh, which part as depicted uh, by the Android design team, uh, and this this URL address is uh, 
really worth uh, looking at. <coughs> it's something that you will visit uh, really frequently because it's uh, a whole set of uh, pointers to guide you uh, throughout the design process. And here I've uh, collected just a few uh, of these and we'll try to uh, introduce you to, to, to these topics. Okay, John, what can it mean that the app uh, will chant to me? Uh, okay, you can find uh, several uh, sub points to, to this one at the design guide. Uh, I chose to say something about uh, this uh, one. It's called Real Objects are more fun than what is in it. Right? This uh, uh, will have to. Uh, think about how do we interact with mobile application. Well, the most basic way of interacting is, of course, a task, right? Uh, we've seen or heard it yesterday. And, oh, by the way, can you think of some other ways of interacting with an app other than the task screen? Google uh, Plus. Okay, Google Plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, so the uh, speech recognition, right? Uh, any others? Like movement, mm -hmm. movement, right? Exactly. Uh, and this is, this uses the accelerometer, right? Uh, so you can use uh, accelerometer even in uh, other uh, fun ways like shape. You can detect when the user shakes the phone and provide some kind of event. And that's a, that's an idea. We'll use it in our projects. Um, but let's get back to the task screen. So, basically, how does a task screen work? Yeah, okay. Captain offers to the rescue. Uh, but this uh, seemingly obvious um, statement uh, has some uh, cool uh, implications. Uh, basically, it's about the direct manipulation, right? Uh, Speaker yesterday at the wireframe uh, presentation uh, told that uh, there is no pointer uh, anymore, right? Uh, on non touch screen systems and even on the uh, first uh, touch based code where you would use a stylus uh, to point things at screen, um, there, there would always be some kind of indicator or some of abstract uh, level of um, moving throughout. UI, like uh, uh, side, uh, side bars where you could scroll uh, through the screen. Uh, and now, just don't use any kind of uh, such, such element, just take the list and move it with your finger. Uh, so, how can we encompass this uh, into our application? Or one of uh, the cool uh, ideas is to use uh, the pull to uh, refresh a uh, pattern. Uh, it's used in Facebook, Twitter and all the most popular apps, uh, apps uh, around there. Uh, it's cool because that's a natural movement, right? You, know, you want to check if there's something new, maybe there's something hidden uh, that you haven't seen before, so you just try to slide this down. And so someone smart thought, hey, why don't we? Uh, just update, check, really check if there is uh, something new while the user uh, does that uh, subconscious even uh, movement. Uh, another thing, another thing, uh, swiping the uh, tabs, right? And that's in fact typical to Android uh, on iOS. Uh, rather, it's, um, it's rather a single element that are swipeable. Here we can swipe left or right the whole uh, fragment. Um, and in fact, it's uh, not that hard to implement. Well, it was uh, two years, or two, it was two years ago, and started uh, working in the development. Um, it was a real, real nightmare to do something like this. But uh, as I said, the system has evolved, new tools were released, so uh, none of your None of the developers from your team uh, should uh, say bad things that you've designed it so that they have some, so much work to do. Um, 
again, kind of simplify my life. What does the I mean, developer design or design design center uh, say about that? Um, I'd like to focus on two things. Give a brief and pictures of a cluster that works. Uh, what do I mean by keeping it brief? Well, again, uh, when we have to show some text to the user, it can look like this. Right? It's, it seems smart. Yeah, so maybe the user, user understands it. Uh, maybe he will feel smart too. But uh, probability of him reading and uh, comprehending this whole sentence is uh, rather low. Uh, so why not change it to something like this? So, short sentences, uh, action, uh, action verbs, not, not using the passive voice. Uh, that's definitely the way to go. Uh, but sometimes we can uh, skip uh, the text part altogether. And here I have a story. Uh, a few months ago, my parents bought a car. Uh, when I sat at the wheel, um, I noticed you know, that uh, at the dashboard I saw some strange combination of letters. Uh, it was in Polish back then, but to, to translate it to English it was something like this. I was in like so, a few good seconds before I figured out uh, what, what this car really wants from me and uh, why I still don't know why. Manufacturers chose uh, this way instead of uh, doing something like this. Right? We have uh, the whole uh, car uh, displayed and uh, directly shown what's going on here. Um, this pattern is in fact called uh, a world in miniature, uh, where we just put the whole uh, system uh, inside the system. Uh, and it helps uh, to avoid the one cognitive step of the user reading the actual text uh, and giving him a visual clue uh, up front. So that's about all the multimedia thing is about, right? Uh, think of using it uh, in your wraps. And third thing, I'll only show what I need when I need it. And it's uh, about the feature of our brains that uh, makes us um, filter out the information uh, which we perceive as noise. So we uh, focus only on the important things. And sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult to figure out which things uh, really are important, which are not. So if you're not sure uh, if the user actually needs uh, this piece of UI, then just uh, hide it or put it. More distant place. Uh, it's also about uh, keeping the margins and you know, just everything what the minimalistic design is about. And I guess you probably are familiar with that. Uh, so that's it for the simplified our life part. Uh, let's move on to name editing. Um, here I can recommend you, uh, well, maybe not now, but uh, you have free time uh, watching a cool video of Rito Meyer. Uh, it's a video from uh, this year's uh, Google I.O. session, uh, where he shares his ideas on uh, what to do to make the users uh, at times um, say things like, well, it works great, or uh, I didn't know this was even possible. Uh, well, this requires gathering uh, some data, and there's this uh, chart that uh, he proposed, uh, and it's shows the level of coolness of your app uh, as a function of the data it collects, right? Uh, so we have Google Maps which uh, knows our location and it's really great. Uh, used Google Maps uh, can do some really amazing things like learning our uh, habits and uh, adjusting the maps based on that. Uh, but when the app uh, starts silently uploading things that users <clears throat> not really um, aware of, well, it starts to be creepy. <clears throat> but uh, after that point, uh, things like Google now, but it sends basically everything uh, to Google, but uh, gives you some cool features, maybe. Um, so, what 
can be learned from this uh, that uh, getting the data uh, can make the app uh, work cool. Uh, oh, and one thing that uh, he says in this uh, talk is about using the APIs uh, or the uh, features of, of the phones that are not maybe the, that uh, common yet, like uh, NFC communication or MVP. Because for maybe not all of the phones have the NFC chips, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, but when uh, two users uh, want to I know, set up a game, uh, for example, and they uh, either have to use all, this, the, all these settings uh, the old way, and once they, uh, once they actually uh, use the Android Beam, where you can just uh, hold two devices together, it's all set up. It's like, Really works, and uh, they don't even think of going back uh, to the old way because this new approach is really uh, more usable. So, uh, well, it's a bit stepping into, into the future, but this future, uh, as we can see, uh, either can, can come within a year or two. Yeah, I suppose you want your apps to be uh, available for more than a year or two. Okay. So these are only uh, three uh, guidelines uh, shown uh, at the design guide. There are uh, plenty of more. Uh, so they're not, not that uh, long to read, so we can just uh, go uh, to the design page and uh, scroll up, uh, looking at some things that might actually uh, augment some of process of you creating the apps. Okay, so uh, to summarize this part, uh, the three main things that I want you to remember from this, uh, from this part of, of the presentation, uh, stay up to date, so uh, keep an eye for, uh, for the new things that appear uh, in, the, in the Android ec ecosystem, uh, some cool things that emerge. Uh, use feedback. So uh, when you have the designs, uh, don't stop on to make it an iterative process rather than linear. Uh, you remember the uh, circle thing. Uh, so in fact, it's it's never finished, but uh, we can stop at the uh, place where it's good enough, as uh, was also said previously. Uh, but uh, don't. Just uh, once, once it's released, as it is good enough, uh, don't stop improving it. You know, uh, and just keep it cool. So use everything you can uh, to make this app uh, great and usable in any way. Okay. So that was the first part. Uh, now we can move on to the uh, patterns and best practices. Uh, so this will be this. Building blocks that uh, form together, uh, group together, and uh, form a uh, really good application. So there's uh, quite a handful of topics here. Uh, first, we'll talk about the design for responsiveness. Our responsiveness uh, is about uh, the user knowing that the app is really working and what is it doing at the time. Mm -hmm. First, uh, first thing to say about responsiveness is the actual smoothness of the UI. Uh, this is more, than, more, more for developers, and more of a developer's thing, uh, but you can uh, just keep an eye for it once you evaluate or test the app. Probably, uh, I don't know if you, you will be the ones uh, to actually test the app, but you know, just to keep, a look, uh, keep an eye on that. That's all really it's uh, because it's really uh, hard, it's really easy to uh, plug in this main thread of all the UI operations, uh, upper font, and everything like uh, network connections, database queries, etc., uh, should be moved to some background task. I'm going to tell about it for the developers uh, on Thursday. Uh, so that's just a uh, quick notice. Responsiveness is also about 
uh, signaling what is the current state of the app. Uh, because uh, so what that the uh, app started doing some work in the background. Uh, the apps, uh, the buttons are still uh, active. You can click them, but uh, the user doesn't know that something is going on in the background. So you can use things like uh, the progress. This wheel is called the progress bar uh, in Android. It can be confused because the, this uh, horizontal uh, progress bar is also called a progress bar. Uh, so that's a bit of ambiguity here. And you can use also a uh, whole dialog window which shows uh, this progress bar and some text. By the way, uh, just putting a simple loading text here. Uh, well, it's not necessarily uh, the best practice for you know, just user creativity to uh, figure out something uh, fun for the user uh, to play there. And another thing. Uh, are the states of the elements of the UI, like the buttons, for example, here. Uh, because probably uh, you will be responsible for designing the graphics at times, right? So design is also connected to, uh, to doing some actual uh, graphics. I don't know this, but uh, it is a common case. Uh, and when you start designing the buttons, or any other uh, UI elements, uh, we should uh, take care of all the states that the, this particular uh, control or view, because uh, these controls are called views in Android, uh, what, what states uh, can this view be in? Like, we have the button, so uh, there are no hover uh, states like we had earlier in the uh, web development. But when you actually press the button, it changes its state to the press state. Uh, when it's actually focused, uh, well now uh, the focus maybe is not, not that important. Uh, well, it's, it has a separate state for the focus, focus state. Um, and when you say the button, you want it to look uh, in another way. So uh, when de uh, designing the graphics, it's good to uh, just figure out uh, what uh, kinds of uh, image transformations would uh, look good and, uh, when the user actually uh, does that action. Uh, as you can see here, uh, for each of these states, there are also three size versions. Uh, we'll get to that uh, a little later. We'll get to it. Okay, the last part of responsiveness section I want to talk about are the animations. And these are just uh, really things to say about animations. It should be well timed, well -timed smooth, and relevant. Uh, well, well timed means that they should basically be not too long and not too short. Uh, Android provides a set of Default animation times. Uh, the medium animation time is about 300 milliseconds. And 300 milliseconds is something uh, is a value that uh, lets uh, the user actually see the animation, but it's not that it has to not, not that long, so that it has to wait uh, wait for the animation to, to finish. Uh, smooth animations. Uh, well, even if you design an animation that uh, even if the hardware is uh, capable of uh, playing an animation in, I don't know, 60 FPS or something like that, uh, when you're designing a really short animation for uh, something that uh, occupies a huge part of the screen, like uh, the screen change from uh, uh, bottom corner uh, all the way through the screen, uh, then in 300 milliseconds it's just gonna start showing individual frames uh, instead of uh, instead of some, some smoothness because there's physically no way to uh, even in 60 fps uh, when the whole uh, animation lasts uh, 300, 300 milliseconds it's about uh, just just a couple of frames that will actually be displayed. Um, 
so what you can do about it, uh, for example, you can uh, start the animation not from the beginning, right, not the this, uh, bottom corner, but somewhere from the middle, and add to the animation uh, the effect of uh, fade, so that uh, not only it swipes in, but also fades in. Uh, it's uh, actually included in the, some of the different animations. Um, and for it, uh, the animation should be relevant. <coughs> that means uh, you know we can do some cool effects like uh, what can we think of? Some fire burning out the windows or something. But the uh, question is, will it be usable? Will, will the user actually need these animations when uh, if he wants just to use the app to uh, fulfill the task that the app was created for? So just uh, keep it that. Okay, so that. Responsiveness. Uh, case now moving on to consistency. Uh, sometimes when uh, you uh, work with some clients that uh, already have uh, an app uh, written for iOS uh, and they want just the uh, same application for Android, uh, uh, you want uh, to um, talk to them how they like maybe uh, the application uh, being done and they say oh, I have an iOS application just give me the same for Android that uh, will be the same and this is really one of the worst things uh, you can imagine for Android uh, and I'm telling you this for two main reasons one being the technical issues that go with uh, trying to mimic uh, the behavior of uh, iOS and the other uh, the actual user experience what the user actually sees uh, and why it's not uh, so good uh, like the client uh, thinks it will, uh, will be. Uh, okay, and these technical issues uh, are uh, such like it's uh, every system provides some predefined controls, right? They work uh, for most of the apps. Uh, iOS, which has Okay, iOS has a great design. Uh, the apps are mostly uh, cool in terms of usability, uh, but it has uh, this set of, uh, of patterns that it uses: uh, UI elements, uh, navigation patterns, etc. Android is itself, and it's trying to uh, copy solutions from one platform to another uh, leads to. Increase time uh, of uh, and workloads to actually uh, make it happen, and even uh, when spending such a lot of time on doing this, uh, well, it uh, seems it turns out that uh, the actual effect is rather poor and full of errors. So, uh, in terms of technical things, it's better to stick with the things that the system actually provides. Uh, and about the user experience. Uh, imagine that we have two users, one has uh, an Android device and some apps uh, installed on his device, the second user has some apps installed on his device, and let's uh, assume that uh, these are basically the same, uh, uh, the same apps for different platforms. So, uh, Developers and or designers' perspective is like this: like, right? Uh, I want my app to look consistent, so I will make uh, the app look the same on one platform and the other. That's consistency for me. And that's, let's now focus on what the user actually sees, because uh, this app that uses some patterns, some uh, some elements that uh, are familiar. Consistent with the Android system, these up, these up as well. Um, basically, this is what the user sees, uh, and this app, app number two, would actually stand out uh, from all them. Maybe uh, not in a positive way. Okay, so uh, I decided uh, on what to do uh, in terms of. 
external relations of uh, the elements you're using. Uh, and you know that you're using the elements uh, from the Android system, not the iOS, uh, and without mimicking it, um, you can focus on uh, creating a theme for your applications. And it's in fact really easy. Uh, later I'll show you with some uh, cool tools that uh, allow um, uh, that show a, a simple way of creating a whole thing just with a few clicks. Uh, once that thing is set, uh, well, there's not much uh, to do. Not much to do. Uh, one thing uh, to keep uh, in mind is uh, the navigation. Because when the app starts to grow, uh, it, uh, if you settle on one uh, navigational pattern, uh, I'll show you the navigation uh, patterns uh, later, uh, you can uh, actually end up uh, having one solution uh, in one part of the app, and some just just like that, uh, some other uh, in another part of the app. That's a bad thing. Uh, so once you decide decide on uh, how you're uh, going to um, handle navigation, just stick to that or basically uh, change the way of navigation completely, what we've seen recently in the Gmail app, when they uh, introduced the navigational uh, drawer. That would be it. Uh, and we're using elements. This is uh, something really promoted in Android. Uh, Really encourage us to uh, use, element, use elements like uh, layouts or even whole uh, fragments uh, of UI so that um, if you have a layout for uh, smartphones and a layout for tablets, which has uh, probably two, two sections, you can actually use the whole fragment uh, from the smartphones. You don't have to write it and you that's a really good thing. Okay, uh, so moving on from consistency. Sorry, I have a Do you mean that oh, we can use the same structure for mobile phone and uh, tablet, yeah. for example? Yes, if, you, if that's yeah. what you want, you can just uh, include the whole section uh, from the smartphone and add just, uh, let's say, the detail pane uh, on the right. Not the other side, tablets for smartphones, just smartphones for the tablet. Well, mm, it's going to work anyway. We imagine that it's hard to fit uh, you know, uh, if all the information from a huge screen onto a smaller screen. Yeah. The other way around, no problem because you have more space. Uh, in fact, it's good to uh, place the elements uh, so that there's not too much free space left. 10 each tablet, uh, why just show uh, the same as uh, on, uh, on a smartphone? Okay, moving on to navigation. Uh, the most important thing, yes, navigation, the detection bar. Uh, before it was introduced, uh, well, this, this was the kind of many other uh, Android versions. Main navigation is handled by uh, dashboard layout. So when you open the app, the app uh, it was a list of categories or something like that. Uh, action bar, uh, in fact, changed it. And you can see it's uh, available since Android 3.0 uh, or AP11. That would be a huge drawback, if not for a uh, cool, cool little external library that uh, lets us port uh, this behavior to all the devices uh, from two point something up. So uh, that's something that uh, even official Google apps use. So uh, it's a really important thing. Also maybe a bit for, for the developers. Uh, but you know, if they tell you that oh, we can have action bar on uh, our uh, 2.2 device, Okay, so 
what are the main elements of an action bar? We have the app icon, which serves uh, sometimes as the home button. Uh, we have the top level navigation, uh, which can take uh, different forms, as we will see later. And the action items, or uh, the icons that trigger uh, action specific to, to the current context. Uh, what we see here is the overflow uh, menu. Uh, so um, when you uh, when there are more uh, action items that uh, do not just fit uh, on the screen, they all land in the overflow menu. And um, in fact, uh, it's not that uh, you can um, just force some uh, items to to appear. Because uh, what you specify for the system is just uh, an indication that you would like these uh, action items to be visible uh, in that order, and uh, whether they are in fact, visible or not, uh, that depends on uh, whether the system decides that there is enough place or not. So, uh, while designing, keep in mind that uh, later it can turn out that uh, not all the icons are. Actually, we split some of them uh, with the overflow menu. Uh, the context menu, uh, a commonly uh, used uh, pattern is the uh, long click. Uh, in most apps, uh, long click or long tap um, and shows the context menu for the specific item from the list that was selected. And we have the two styles shown here. Uh, we use the style or contextual action bar uh, and here I'm not telling that uh, either of the solutions uh, is better. Why is that? Uh, because, well, okay, contextual action bar, action bar looks uh, cooler, maybe uh, there's a huge animation of these items uh, appearing in the place of the regular action bar, uh, but here is the thing um, Related to what uh, we've been talking about uh, during the car example, right? Uh, there's this visual indication. These items are mostly uh, a visual indication. It's really okay if uh, they are clear enough that the user actually can uh, recognize them uh, at a glance. So actions like edit, uh, share, delete. Okay, there's uh, no problem with, with them, uh, but if you have some uh, actions that uh, actually cannot be expressed as a simple icon, so that the user would have to uh, actually think about uh, what this icon would do, uh, you can just go for, for the classic uh, context menu, and it's all fine this way. Uh, Evernote, I guess, uses still uh, this kind of menu. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's uh, Android name for a drop down. Um, and here we kind of have even more uh, items to navigate uh, without the expense of uh, making the, the whole thing wider. Uh, and last thing, the newest fact was uh, officially included in, in the package uh, about a few months ago. Uh, although apps uh, have used this uh, um, for quite a long time before, but these were uh, official solutions. They worked, uh, worked good, but uh, now it's uh, an official guide.
using images, right? Some sample screenshots with uh, some pixel values uh, annotation, pixel value annotations, and it's like in fact I had to uh, figure it out uh, myself how to how to do it. So uh, maybe uh, I can teach you to, to avoid <laughs> such a thing. Um, so why is why is that? Uh, pixels from uh, a cool design, right? Or, or a wireframe uh, made in, in uh, Azure, for example, uh, cannot actually uh, be rendered on a screen. And the answer is here. Uh, there are so many different screen sizes that uh, makes it uh, really impossible to uh, figure out what the app is going to look like on each of them. Even when you see that, uh, when we have uh, found a uh, similar uh, screen size in here, uh, we, can, we can have a different, uh, like uh, here we have 3.7, 3.2, uh, more or less uh, similar sizes, but the resolution on both phones uh, is different, uh, thus making the uh, uh, pixel density. Uh, also different, and they actually fall into different categories. Uh, and we can uh, select some, uh, select a, a set of packets uh, of, uh, of the devices. Uh, here they are um, matched on uh, the density, uh, as you can see. And yeah, uh, when developing, you can. Uh, actually uh, safely do three designs for just the three of, uh, of devices like phones, uh, seven inch tablets and ten inch tablets sometimes even uh, it's enough to uh, design for, for a phone and, uh, and a tablet if uh, you follow some uh, some conventions that I'll show you later uh, okay yeah that's an example of uh, Using the same pixel value on devices uh, with different densities. Uh, as you can see, uh, screens with low density tend to uh, make all the items, uh, all, the, um, all the sizes uh, appear bigger, and at a high density, uh, they get much smaller. Okay, so the solution. Uh, what is the solution? The solution is the uh, dip. Density independent pixel, that's basically a uh, pixel value that is actually scaled um, uh, using the uh, multiplier uh, I showed before. And by using this, uh, this unit, uh, we can achieve uh, some basic uh, consistency across different devices. There's also another unit. Uh, that you might uh, encounter, it's called SIP or SP. Um, it's basically a div that uh, takes into account uh, the user settings for text. Like some users may uh, not see the text uh, properly or they may uh, be far sighted so they, uh, they can, cannot see uh, small text. Uh, then they can uh, set in settings that uh, they want text appear bigger if you use uh, this, uh, this unit uh, it will respect this set. Okay, so uh, what's the difference? The, the difference between a good or a bad layout? So basically a uh, good thing is to leave uh, one dimension uh, where the uh, screen can actually scroll or uh, I don't know, so so that uh, the elements don't uh, get hidden or the, know, there's not enough space whenever uh, the screen resol the resolution or uh, aspect ratio changes. So that's good uh, when you uh, can actually uh, size. But just imagine that uh, this this border can move. This way or this way, uh, and and this 
also can, can be altered as we always can. Uh, with this kind of layout, I actually had a situation uh, where uh, some guy said, that, okay, we'll just split this into four uh, same sized uh, same sized items.
being in this app. So uh, if you expect user to spend lots of time using your app, like um, when you sign an ebook reader or, or, or something that's some kind of player or, or something that lasts very long and shows your UI for a, a prolonged uh, time span, uh, it's generally preferred to, to use a darker layout because of the battery performance of uh, about screens, which are used on most of the Samsung devices. Uh, you can also go for the switchable beams, like some of the apps uh, do, and uh, just include an option in the settings of uh, switching from one beam to the other. Okay, basic UI elements. Okay, a bit. Um, what do we have here? Uh, this is about structuring uh, how your app is going to work. Um, so here you have the uh, top level view, uh, then you uh, usually move to, to the basic categories, then there's some detail or player or, or, or the most informative part of the app. And about top level view, uh, uh, now it's uh, really good to push already some comments so, so that user doesn't have to click through uh, some of the uh, many, many positions uh, but he gets some content uh, up front. Uh, in the details, uh, just remember that this pattern like versus start and uh, you can also use swiping uh, as in the Gmail app for example. Uh, okay, uh, here we are at the multiplayer layouts of told you something about it. Um, so here in the smartphone case, uh, we are going from one screen to the other, everyone, uh, every, every of these activities uh, covers a full screen, on tablets you can show it uh, all at once and uh, for example uh, differentiate between uh, uh, vertical and uh, uh, horizontal and vertical uh, position using the sensors. Thank you very much. 